All right, as we come back together again tonight for the rest of the message from this morning, I want to turn your attention back to Matthew 11, 28 through 30. We're just going to go ahead and read that, <clears throat> even though we're going to deal with some other scriptures as well. I want to uh, at least give that as the basis again tonight. Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And as we noticed this morning, <clears throat> there's a couple aspects to the, um, the rest that, that uh, Jesus wants to give to us. And part of that, obviously, is even a rest from work. He wants us to take a break once in a while. He wants us to uh, be able to uh, recuperate a little bit and revive our spirits and, and even our, our physical strength and all. And so that's part of it. And then also, as we focused especially, He wants to give us rest from guilt. And again tonight, just a reminder, if you are, if you are ill at ease, if your heart is troubled and you are are oppressed in your spirit because of sin, then you can find rest because this is a universal invitation. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, He promises rest. So if we will come to Him, we can have the rest for our soul. So that was this morning, but now this evening, let's go ahead and, and move a little bit further. And it's not just rest uh, as far as a day of rest, a time of rest, from work, it's not just the rest that we find in, in salvation and the sacrifice of Christ that has been made for us, but we also go a little further, and there's rest from burdens. Rest from burdens. If, if uh, you are like most people, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say it that way, but I have a feeling that, that uh, a lot of people are struggling, even maybe over the last little while, it seems as though we've been going through a lot of struggle with burdens and, and uh, the, um, I don't know if I should say heartaches, although that could be included, but, but even just the frustrations of life and all the things that, that just weigh us down and, and we have decisions to make or things to do, uh, uh, the turmoil of, of just our human existence. It's not like there's sin involved, but it's just, just the duties of life. And so perhaps your burden, maybe there's even a health concern and, and you've just been going through some pretty difficult places. And so if that's the case, let's go over to uh, Mark chapter 4. Well, I hope you all turn there, <clears throat> but maybe you especially need this if you've been going through those difficult times. And right there at the end of the chapter, or almost the end of the chapter anyway, we have the story of Jesus uh, coming to the disciples <clears throat> and... Uh, there was a, a great storm of wind, and um, actually, in this particular case, he was saying, let's go ahead and, and go over to the, the other side. That's verse 35. We want to begin at verse number 37, really, but it says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat, upon, or beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. <clears throat> now, if you remember this morning, we focused especially on the issue of how the, the whole idea of rest carries the idea of peace. Well, here we see it that he says, Peace be still, and there was a great calm. There's another word that goes along with that there. And so we can can sort of recognize that when, when, when Jesus speaks peace, there's just a calm that comes in our storm, in our burdens, in those difficulties that we face. You probably could find a lot of, a lot of uh, examples of that in the Scripture. <clears throat> and, um, you know, we might call this one or that one that God stepped in for and, and calmed the storm or shut the lion's mouths, for example, or some other, other different things that even think about uh, Paul whenever the angel stood by him in the middle of the night there and, and uh, encouraged him and picked up his spirits and all those things. So we have some of those examples, but for tonight anyway, let's just sort of focus on this, this issue here in Mark 4 and notice that Jesus was resting. 
but the disciples weren't. Now, they may have been involved in some of the just navigating the vessel. I'm not sure. But Jesus was asleep. There had been a, a crowd of people that uh, he'd been teaching and various things. And um, so now he you know, probably is weary and he's in the boat there. And he is resting while the disciples are panicked. And you know, maybe that's just a little tidbit that we ought to take to heart. Because once in a while, even though we may feel panicked, we might need to remind ourselves... God's not taken by surprise. God's resting in a sense, you might say. God's, God's not worked up. He's not wringing his hands wondering what, what he's going to do. But he's, he's offering rest. If we'll just let him take over, he can give us rest in the midst of the storm. There's a, a, a common thread, I guess, in human history that our problem, and not just ours, but our current problem seems to be uh, one of the worst that we faced. Many times that seems to be the case. We, we look at our circumstance and we might even be able to say, oh yeah, God's come through for me in the times past, but it's still, because it's in this moment, because it's what I'm facing right now, then I struggle with it. Then I... I I'm afraid. I don't know just quite how this is going to work out because it's the current one. And maybe we just need to remember that God is the God of the current time. He is I am. Not I was or I will be, but I am. And He's always been the I am. He's been with each one that's faced trials through the, the centuries and, and more. Sometimes we may, may struggle a little bit to hear Him whispering peace. We struggle to see. It doesn't seem like the storm is, is uh, abating like I thought it should. or it, it doesn't seem very calm right now. And obviously sometimes we feel a little bit like the disciples when we're facing our own storm and, and the burdens crash in or, or at least weigh in upon us heavily and we're struggling with it. I've gone through months of burdens and concerns that really I just didn't, I didn't know how it would be solved. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what the answer would be. It just seemed like there was no answer really, at least not, not a ready one. And yet in those times, God always wants us to bring those burdens to Him. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest from the burdens. Rest from the concerns of life. He's still able to calm the sea. And we need to bring our storms, if I could put it that way, bring our storms to Him and let Him just speak peace. He wants to give us rest. Rest from our burdens. But then lastly, I want to also notice a rest from temptation. Now, that's probably something all of us could, could really um, embrace and we could be happy about. Go back to the book of Hebrews and we'll see a little bit about this rest. But I want us to think about this just a little bit. And uh, there's probably kind of a twofold aspect here. And so if you just kind of stick with me for a little bit, I'll try to, to kind of deal with this and, and work our way through it. But I want us to recognize the rest that God has for His people. Well, if you have found Hebrews 4... We begin seeing uh, some of those key scriptures that are, are indicated here um, where he's talking about rest. And uh, verse 1, there, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Okay, so there's one. Then you go a little bit further on down here. And, um, of course, it talks about the rest in verse 4 that that we talked about this morning, where um, God rested on the seventh day and all. And then in verse 5, it mentions again, and in, that, in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Verse 6, Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying to David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, for if Jesus had given them rest, 
Then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us there labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Okay, so it's, it's a lot of verses here about rest. And I suppose there could be some, some questions and debate a little bit as to what exactly is he referring to. Ultimately, I think it does come down to this issue of rest from temptation. But maybe it would be good for us to sort of delve into that just a little bit. We, we might obviously think of, of rest and the remaining rest for God's people to be what we might call sanctification. So that our heart has ceased to be divided and we just want all that God wants us to have. And so there's not that double-mindedness, that, that uh, pull towards sin, but also the pull toward God. And, and so when we are yielded to God in sanctification, that full surrender to Him, then um, we have rest in our spirit. Others may look at this and they may see it merely as a picture of those who have come to the gospel for salvation. And so there is a rest. Now, of course, if you're talking about the Hebrews, you know, we're in Hebrews. And so you're talking about the Hebrews. Well, okay, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. It's not just that they entered into Canaan, not just that they got their land or, and the promise of God, that kind of thing. But there is a rest that is of the soul. So it might be referring to that. And then others may also focus on it as heaven. And uh, it's our final rest, of course. And maybe we could just focus on that for a few moments because it seemed like that could well be a part of what's involved here, at least, is that there is a rest that remaineth. And, of course, it mentions there in um, verse 10, He that has entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. And some might feel like that seems to indicate, okay, there's no more work. Your life is over. And so you enter into rest. And that certainly is true. And so when we think about heaven for a few moments, it ought to really uh, just stir our hearts and minds to recognize that God calls us, or Jesus in, in our passage there in Matthew, calls us to rest. He gives us a rest here and now, but He also is preparing a rest for us for eternity. That may not be literal because we still may be doing things very likely we'll be doing things for God's glory and, and uh, maybe even some duties, but I think we'll, we'll consider them to be a joy. And so we do recognize that there is, there is rest from our, our uh, battle, maybe I could say, the, the fight against the enemy. And so we do have rest from that, but we also uh, have uh, rest from all the curse of sin, all the cares of life, all those things that we focus on throughout the day today. And so maybe we could just sort of touch on, on two sides of this issue at least. And um, obviously, again, we are free from temptation. That's one thing, I guess, in my mind that I think of in, in the issue of heaven. One of the greatest blessings, obviously, I don't want to minimize any part about seeing Jesus and all the rest, but being with Jesus means we'll be totally, completely removed from Satan forever and ever. And what a wonderful blessing to know that someday we won't have to go through all these temptations and trials and all the, the difficulties and heartaches that go along with the, the attack of the enemy, and we can actually be safe at last in heaven. And uh, maybe that's not all together applied here on earth, but it does give us sort of a small measure of how we are totally surrendered to God now. In a sense, we have a bit of heaven in our soul that we can go to eternal heaven uh, in and, and experiencing and all those things. And so we recognize uh, the kind of a twofold aspect there. And I want us to recognize that heaven is our goal. And it even mentions here about we need to be careful that we we labor to enter into that rest, make it safely home, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So we have a promised land. But we need to be careful that we are pushing on, laboring to enter into that rest. It's not time to sit back and relax yet. It's not time to just rest from the, the battle of, of the Christian. But there is coming a day, if we'll stay true, 
that rest will finally come. We can be free from the enemy at last. But another part of that is that right now, helping us get safely over to the other side is a peace, a rest on the inside. And possibly this is part of what the writer here in the Hebrews is, is or in, in the book of Hebrews is talking about, and that is that there is a further rest. We need to strive to go on into a deeper relationship with God. We need to know a full surrender to His will. I've already alluded to that a little bit, and maybe I don't need to spend a lot of time there. Uh, we believe that there is a, a, a rest in the Spirit, that I'm just altogether God's. He has all of me. I, I'm not holding anything back. It's not my will against God's. My will is aligned with God's. I want His will. I want His way. And there is a rest there. And could I just tell you that whenever you get to that place, oh, you can focus a lot on heaven and how there'll be no more temptation. And in the flesh, we will have temptations. However, if you are completely sold out to God and you want whatever He wants, there's no hold back in your, in your soul. There's nothing that you, that you are desiring different than what God wants. Then it takes care of a lot of temptation. I'm not, obviously, we're still tempted. There'll still be this thing that pulls our attention there, or over here, or, or this uh, misunderstanding, or, or, or this hardship that we're going through, and, and I'm tempted maybe to the wrong attitude or the wrong spirit or whatever else. There's, there's, there'll be temptations. But when we want what God wants, it resolves a lot of the issue. You just already have it settled. And temptations sort of lose their, their appeal to some extent. Now, I'm not trying to preach some glorification that is, is not livable, but, but there is a certain extent where the temptation is sort of pushed to the background we might have to still deal with it, but it's already settled in our minds what we're going to do. So the temptation really doesn't have the same pool. And what a rest it is when we can rest in a complete surrender to God and His Spirit to help us day by day, to help us to overcome. Our ultimate goal is that final peace and rest in heaven. But thank God He's provided a rest in our spirit that we can just know everything is clear. And it we're all together what God wants us to be. And we're pushing toward heaven. God help us to overcome temptation now until we make it where temptation can no more come. We'll never be tempted again. At least toward wicked things. I don't know what all uh, God may, may impress us to do and, and urge us to do. And what desires we'll have then. But it'll all be, all be holy. It'll all be righteous. And what a wonderful thing that we can look forward to the rest in heaven for eternity. But having a rest in our soul, a little bit of heaven even in our soul now, to help us enjoy the presence of God day after day. But we need to be careful lest we fall short of it. Let's go back. One more, one more verse that I want to share with you. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation 14 and verse number 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. What a wonderful rest that'll be. But in the meantime, we can have rest in our soul. I've mentioned that over and over. I'm just reminding you again. God help us to live in a place of rest. Not constantly in the battle. I, I understand the devil fights us. But again, when our soul is so surrendered to His will that it's really not a contest anymore. We've chosen to walk with God, to be what He wants us to be. And so God help us to rest. Rest in Him. Rest from our burdens. And then also to find that rest even in sins. I, I know that might almost sound like it's, it's a little overboard, but even in a sense, a rest from uh, some of the severity, at least, of temptation because we have surrendered and sold out to God in every way. And so on this weekend, I'm supposed to be getting some rest, I guess. <laughs> Labor Day, you know, I, probably more, more activity, but just sort of maybe some fun things. But maybe let's take a little bit of inventory of ourselves. 
We did that somewhat this morning, but let's think about it again tonight. Are you really resting in him? Have you given everything to him? He's still bound by worry. He's still bound by cares. Still bound to the, you know, kind of under the weight of the, the storms of life. Well, he calls us, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, if you'll allow him to, God wants to give you that peace. Might almost seem beyond your reach. Almost just, uh, I don't even know how to say it, just uh, beyond comprehension. But he wants to do it. The invitation is to you and to me. There's nothing better than resting in the grace of God with a peace in your heart that overshadows the burdens we face and helps us to keep our hand in his. Well, you can rest in him. Even now this evening, you can rest in him. If you will, whatever the week may hold, you can rest in him. And let's allow God to give us the rest that only comes from knowing him and turning ourselves completely over to him. Full surrender. He takes care of our burdens. He takes care of our temptations if we'll allow him to do that.